we're going to tie another soft tackle here and we're going to use stretch tube micro. Uh, and micro tubing makes for a real nice uh, segmented body on your wet flies. Um, it comes, uh, Sean here at the shop has it in micro and small sizes, okay? And both can be used. Uh, of course, the small you use on a larger bodied fly if you want. And it's nice stuff to use, but one thing you don't want to do with it is in the larva lace brand or the uh, stretch tube brand, you do not want to stretch it out prior to using it. You want to know what you want to do with it before you start trying to thin it down because you can thin the diameter out on it. But for this little uh, wet fly, we're going to go here again, but this time we're going to start the uh, fly just at the hook point. Okay. I'm going to start this fly back at the hook point. Now, as I said before, synthetic material has some bulk to it. Enough that I can't keep track of it. And so, one of the things you want to do with synthetics is always cut them off at a real sharp angle and that angle is your tie-in point. Well, what a difference. Get that tied in. We're going to move the thread up to approximately two eye lengths behind the eye. When you tie with synthetics too and you wrap, start to wrap it, you always want to make your first wrap back on bare hook and step it up onto your tying thread and it helps a transition into a nice smooth body. So we're going to wrap this. and you'll see that there's a nice segmented body and synthetics has some elasticity to them. I don't know if that's a word or not but it is now so you need a few extra wraps of tying thread to hold it. We get that tied down and here again we're going to use some partridge or hen pheasant. We're going to use the phyla flume here from the base of the feather for the collar, I mean, you can use whatever you want. I like red squirrel, rabbit fur in there if you want colors. But this phyloflume just holds so much air bubbles, so it, many air bubbles. And it doesn't take a lot of it to, no. to accomplish what you want. And it's free. You didn't have to buy this. You already bought the bird. <laughs> you already got the yeah. feather. Or you uh, shot one when you were out pheasant hunting. You know, some places in the state you're allowed to shoot hens. So we have that tied yep. in now for a collar. And again, we're going to prepare this feather. And back to the synthetics with this larva lace, you want to also consider when you're tying it the thread that you're putting underneath it because it'll re the transparency of the tubing will show through so you'll actually get a little bit different color and you can change things up a lot. Well, if Sean lets me do one, we're going to tie the same pattern, except we're going to put some flashaboo under it, and you'll see how the material comes alive, acting as an exoskeleton to the fly. So now you're talking my kind of fly with the flashaboo. So we're going to do oh, it. Yeah, you got to have. <laughs> you have to have flies that have flash in them. I mean, I've been telling my dad that for years. If we've, when I do shows, people don't want to watch you tie flies unless they have flash. Yep. Of course, the fish don't care. One day they want them with flash, next day they don't want them with flash. And also one thing to point out, when, uh, when he's stripping down that pheasant fiber, he's stripping it down so he's only getting about three wraps out of the fibers. So he's not building up a real thick... Uh, you know, you're not putting a lot of fibers on on the hook. 
You only want about two or three wraps worth of fibers. Even though we're using a synthetic material here for the body, it's still based the traditional soft hackle wet fly. All we've done was change it from the traditional uh, silk floss to a synthetic body material of some kind. You could tie these same patterns by using dubbing. Uh, I tie a lot of them using red squirrel dubbing. But there you, and a friend of mine back home, we refer to these flies that are tied with synthetics as hard body soft tackles. Okay. Okay, since traditional floss is right. soft and the material here we're using is hard, so they're hence hard body soft tackles. Okay, so there's another one. But let's do one with the flash in it. It's kind of neat how, how they come alive. All right, for this pattern, we're going to tie in again at the hook point. And we're going to tie in the uh, micro tubing, stretch tube. Is there a particular color you like of that, or you the just one, mix and them, match? All of them. I like the one that's stuck in the fish's jaw the best. Right. <laughs> and if you could figure that out, be my guest. So you're tying it in all of them so you can do a, more of a match the hatch kind of thing sure. with it. And, um, and less of a generic nymph pattern. Well, what I'm nymph, using but. here is a, a yellow type body material. Right. With uh, a dun feather, it would be an excellent pattern for sulfurs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with the yellow body, um, you can use it um, with as with the uh, hen pheasant or partridge. You can do that, and you have an excellent uh, pattern for some of the yellow body caddis patterns that are out there. Right. So uh, you have to adapt the patterns that you're tying. To where you're fishing, right. no matter what you do, I mean, uh, you have to adapt, and that's you know, and that's the fun of fly tying or, or fly fishing, is you have to be versatile enough to adapt to the situation. Um, a friend of mine told me a long time ago that fish aren't that bright, but fishermen are pretty dumb <laughs> because you didn't catch fish on a certain day because you did not adapt to the fish's situation. Right. So you always have to be thinking. For this pattern, we're going to tie in some flashaboo. And here again, it's a synthetic material. Cut it on an angle. And that angle, then, is your tie-in point. And once you get that locked in, advance your thread up to two eye lengths behind. And we're going to wrap this flashaboo up to the tying thread. And here again, because it's a synthetic, it has elasticity to it, you can put a couple extra turns in there to hold that. And now we're going to, here again, start your body material back on bare hook. And we'll step this up over and wrap up over the flash of boot. And I hope you could see that, but, and no, we'll try to get a better shot for you. But the flash of boo just brightens up that body material so that you have a little bit of sparkle coming through the body material. And you can also control that too with the tension that you put on the Correct. larva lace too. Correct. Uh, the thinner you, the tighter you stretch it, the more translucent this right. is going to come. Now not all stretch tube, not all larva lace uh, materials are translucent though. Right. So if you're using an opaque shade of the material, there's no need to put the flash underneath it. But it's still, they make great soft, uh, hard body soft tackles. Right. Okay. So here again, we're going to get a uh, feather from either this hen pheasant that I'm using or uh, partridge, whatever you prefer. And we're going to use the phyla flume again for the collar. But Feel free to use any color dubbing you want, squirrel fur, rabbit fur. I'm very partial to red squirrel. <laughs> so we 
have the uh, file flume on there. And you only want um, on your hackle enough to give you two to three turns on your collar for your that was one of the biggest mistakes that uh, I probably made as a young tire whenever I started tying years ago when we started fishing we fished a lot of wet flies so we did a lot of tying of wet flies and too big of too big of hackle was a, a common mistake that we made too much hackle I should say yeah too much but over the years I've kind of changed that theory too in a way because in England where a lot of these patterns originated they fish a lot of the slow moving chalk streams okay and two three turns of us on a soft hackle is plenty but here in the States, with the bigger brawling waters that we have, you can overdress a soft hackle wet fly with four or five turns. And you want that for in the bigger, heavier pocket water that you may be fishing in. Uh, so you need some of both. And we tie even some soft hackle patterns. I guess that really aren't soft hackles because we use rooster hackle for some of the collars. And in heavier pocket water, that rooster collar really catches the currents and, and movement of the stream and is a lot more alive. Right. So, you know, the, like I said earlier, fly tying is a, you know, and especially for yourself, it's for what you do. Right. But I could see here uh, through the camera lens here too that you can see the shine on this body there. Yep. So, but wrapping that translucent shade over top of some crystal flash or flashaboo, you you get that nice shiny exoskeleton effect. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for another wet fly pattern. And uh, check us out at the shop. And please take the time to subscribe to our channel. And uh, Thanks for Randy to visiting and tying with us today. Mm -hmm.